Hello, Alpha Alpha 2 Victor Golf here. Thank you for uh, checking out my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, the new Micronta that arrived in the mail from eBay several days ago. It's a uh, model 22-208. Uh, it came with the um, with the connectors and uh, also a manual. And um, as I'm sure you you probably found on eBay, sometimes you'll ask them if these, this is 44 years old, it was sold in the late 70s. Uh, so I asked if it worked and they said yes. Well, um, it arrived with two dead batteries, uh, one of them leaking a little bit, so I'm not really sure that they checked it. Uh, anyway, uh, it's in great shape for 44 years old, um, and it works quite well, except for the resistance. And we'll talk about that. It's something I need to repair. And the, uh, the parts just arrived. We'll work on that, and uh, I'll see if I can post the repair. Anyway, so why do I want a analog uh, voltmeter that's 44 years old. Um, well, I just love these guys. Um, I just love watching the needle um, and uh, and measuring. Um, you can measure voltage, you can measure current, um, AC and DC voltage and resistance. So uh, now why would I want a Micronta? Now this is a FET, a field effect transistor um, volt ohm meter. And uh, why would I want that if I already have a Simpson? Okay. Well, um, I love my Simpson and, uh, it's, it's built, uh, it's a little sturdier. Um, and, um, I think it's a, it's a better meter than the Micronta. Let's see if we can get that all in the picture. Uh, but anyway, uh, these guys are uh, fun to operate. Now, why do I need these when I do have a, a Fluke meter, a Fluke 115, which is an excellent meter? Well, um, let me talk first about the difference between these two meters. Um, the Simpson is not a field effect transistor meter, and the big difference is the um, the impedance. Um, so when you're measuring DC current, the impedance on the Simpson is 20, uh, 20 kilovolts per, uh, per volt, uh, 20 kilo ohms per volt. And um, so what happens when you're measuring in the low range, like when you're measuring uh, the 2.5 scale, what happens is that the thing that you're measuring picks up the Simpson as a parallel circuit. And uh, if that uh, thing that you're measuring has a high impedance, um, you're not gonna get an accurate reading because there's gonna be a voltage drop simply because of the meter. For example, uh, well, okay, let's move over to the Micronta. So the Micronta is a field effect transistor VOM. And the impedance on the DC voltage is 10 mega ohms. So there's a huge difference. And the 10 mega ohms, uh, when you put that into a circuit and you're measuring something, uh, doesn't take up uh, any current and uh, there's no voltage drop. So you get a true reading. For example, when I measured the, um, the base of one of the transistors on my transistor AM radio, um, my uh, Fluke measured it as 1.5 volts, and the Fluke also has a 10 mega ohm impedance. The Simpson measured it as 1.35 volts, and the Micronta measured it as 1.5 volts. So it's more accurate in the low DC range. Um, but why does anybody want these meters when you can get 
you can use your digital meter. Well, it's the needle. So um, when you're measuring, um, when you're restoring old um, vintage radios, which I've done a whole bunch, um, and uh, you're trying to align the AM section, what you're doing is you're modulating a tone, either 600 hertz or 1,000 hertz, uh, into the radio, and you're measuring the voltage uh, on the wires that go to the speaker. And usually with these old radios, there's 1.5 volts. And for example, on the Simpson, on the 2.5, you'll get a nice swing. So you can peak the, the IF filters. Um, as you're turning the filters, you can see the needle go up or go down. So you know you're going in the right direction. You want to go up. With the digital meter, you're seeing numbers jumping all over the place and it's, 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 it's more difficult. Um, so that's why I love these guys. Now, there is also um, one other problem when you're measuring low voltage stuff like um, AM FM transistor radios or my ham radios and you're trying to align the uh, the filters for example on the receive um, you're basically measuring the the uh, AC voltage the 600 or 1000 ohms depending on what you're feeding into it I'm sorry 600 to 1000 um, uh, hertz, depending on what you're feeding into the into the radio, you're measuring maybe 100, 200 millivolts. So you can see on on both of these scale, this goes down to to three on AC. This goes to 2.5, um, and you can see that you're really not going to get any needle movement in that um, millivolt range. So these meters don't help you a lot, except for what's called a voltage multiplier. Uh, now, Manuel Caldera on Electronics Old and New, his YouTube channel, a wonderful channel, um, has designed a voltage multiplier. And um, let me get that, and I'll show you what it's all about. So this is the voltage multiplier that uh, Manuel designed. You can see it's got his logo on there. Electronics, old and new. Uh, it's a voltage multiplier. And uh, he designed the board. You can get the board, uh, you can get the Gerber file online. Uh, you can contact him. Uh, you can go to uh, PCBWay. Uh, you can see the Gerber file, and um, you can have them uh, make up the board for you. I did. I had the board sent to me um, for $5, and it cost me $9 shipping. Um, he also designed this um, cover, this box, um, and that was simple. I just downloaded the STL file and brought it to my local library, and uh, they very reasonably priced for $3.50. I had the box made. And so basically what this does, it's got a little switch over here that you can change. Um, so it'll multiply the voltage. So, for example, on uh, one of my QRP radios, I was um, trying to um, uh, align the receiver. So I was turning the capacitors and um, I was measuring 100, 200 millivolts, which of course you're not going to see on these meters. But if you put this in between... Uh, the uh, the earpiece, okay, the positive and negative to the earpiece, and uh, out here goes to one of these meters. Um, if I'm measuring 200 millivolts and I put this on the 10 scale, um, then my needle goes up to uh, a volt, and uh, I can watch it move. I, if I put it on the uh, 13 uh, multiplier, um, it goes up even more. So uh, it's good for, uh, this is excellent uh, to use to make these meters work well, uh, to help you align those uh, transistor radios, uh, which have 
um, very little uh, voltage on the um, plug-in earpiece, especially the QRP radios. Um, and uh, so this has worked uh, <clears throat> quite well for me. And uh, I'm looking forward to using both these meters. I am looking forward to repairing this meter. And what I will do is uh, I will uh, show some of the repair. Uh, basically, it's uh, changing <clears throat> two resistors that were burnt uh, that were obvious uh, when I got it. Okay, um, I'll see you uh, for the repair. Okay, back again. So uh, when I receive the, uh, the meter, uh, the back comes off with uh, three screws. And, uh, and here we are. And you can see right away that we've got a problem. You've got a burnt resistor here and one here. And these uh, are used for the resistance uh, measurement. Uh, the resistant measurement uses this 1.5 volt C size battery and um, uh, just uh, basically measures the micro ohms using the formula uh, V equals IR, or basically resistance equals voltage um, over the um, uh, over the current and. Um, there's a nine volt battery that runs everything else, the AC, DC voltage, and the uh, current. Okay, so uh, I just need to uh, search out all of these wires. Uh, I need to take this board off and be careful. Um, I wish I had the uh, $250 uh, Heiko, uh, or Heiko uh, solder sucker, but I don't. So we'll have to work with uh, with solder braid and, uh, and a little hand sucker to get these two guys off and replace them. Okay, see you soon. Back again, well, it looks like we're good. That's a 4.7 ohm resistor uh, that I'm testing and it's reading 4.9-ish, not, not too bad. Okay, now to, cl now to close out, I'd like to show you why I love these 40-year-old analog meters with big needles. Um, they're certainly great for when you're restoring vintage 1950, 1960 radios uh, because the uh, voltage that goes to the uh, speakers is uh, pretty high. I mean, it's uh, above one volt usually. So the meters work great. For ham radio though, especially QRP radios like this QRP KD1JV tri-bander, um, you're only gonna get millivolts out of the uh, speaker port, which is actually an ear earpiece port. Um, so in order to use these meters, you may need something like a voltage multiplier. Again, this was uh, designed by um, Manual at uh, Electronics Old and New. Um, I will link the video and uh, you can obtain the boards and the parts are pretty simple. If you have any questions, um, you can always send me a, a comment and uh, so back to here. So what do we have? We have the sig Siglent signal, signal generator set to 21.060 with an amplitude of two volts peak to peak. And uh, it's being modulated with um, 600 Hertz AM frequency signal. It's going to an antenna. If you can see the little loop there, that's my little antenna. Uh, the radio is powered by this BioEno battery. It's set up to a dummy load, although I'm not going to be doing any transmissions. Um, that's there for safety. And so the radio is picking up the uh, 21060 signal and sending it to uh, the speaker. And this can be set for either speaker or dummy load. 
And uh, then it's going into this voltage multiplier and uh, then into the um, meter. The meter is set to three volt scale AC, alternating current because it's a 600 Hertz signal. And, um, and away we go. I'm gonna turn on the uh, signal generator. You can hear the sound. Now, normally if I was aligning this rig, I would have the rig opened up and I would be turning the, uh, the capacitor pots, but uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna show you the sensitivity with the volume. Um, and so uh, it makes it easy to align these radios. You can watch the movement of the needle, uh, even in an area where you really can't discern the, the difference in sound. Um, so uh, that's why I love these meters. I use them on my vintage radio restorations and now on my amateur radio equipment especially my QRP 5 watt CW rigs. Okay, well, thank you for watching. And um, I would certainly welcome any comments. Have a great day.